Well, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Thrive. I want you to put some fire in the chat right now. Listen, I want you to put fire in the chat like you are praising and thanking God for what's getting ready to happen. Man, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about today. Yeah. And we're pivoting a little bit. One, I'm excited about this new series mm -hmm. that we're starting called I'm Gifted. And um, if you're here for the very first time, first of all, welcome. My name's Pastor Darius. This is Pastor Marcus. And we just come out of a series yeah. studying the book of Nehemiah yeah. called Reconstruction. We got some incredible feedback on that series. Man, awesome. It was awesome. Like, like at some point you're going to need Reconstruction. That's right. And we serve a God of re. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whatever he again. needs to do, he can do it again. Yeah. You know what? Let's just come on. Just let's just <laughs> let's just prophetically affirm that in the chat. Um, I want everybody. Come on. Unless you're driving. Yeah. If you're driving, don't do it. But I want everybody right now to just put one word in the chat again. 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 <laughs> he can heal again. He can restore again. Come on. He can fix it again. Come on. He can deliver again. again. He can send an opportunity again. again. As a matter of fact, we just believe by faith he's getting ready, ready to, do it, to do it again. To do it again. And we're just receiving and claiming that by faith. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Again. In the name of Jesus. We want to make a little pivot here. There's something God's kind of placed on my heart about this moment. And that is we want to make sure that we're not just proclaiming principles. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But we're also practicing prayer. Yeah. Because there are some things that cannot be done with a teaching. There are, other, there are some things that can only be done with a touch. And we want to make sure that we're coming into agreement yeah. with you, adding our faith to yours yeah. regarding the power of prayer. I heard this quote. I want to know what you think about it. This quote, I can't remember where I got it from, but a guy, it might have been Ian Bounds. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, but basically, if we, it was Ian Bounds or Sam Storms. I can't remember. It's one mm -hmm. of them. They said, if people actually knew mm. the power of prayer you never have to beg any believer to pray again lord have mercy that's so good yep so to good. know the power of oh, prayer, prayer and not to pray is insanity it's insanity it's insanity <laughs> and and i think that what prayer is is it's an invitation for yes. god's visitation that's it like that's it's it. inviting god it's <clears throat> connecting the God of heaven, the God who can do all things. Yes. It's inviting him into our process. And, you know, I think that word invitation is so key. And uh, we're talking about this because I want to stir your faith. We're getting ready to have just, a, we got some prayer requests we're getting ready to pray over. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to teach in just a second. But one of the things I think is so important is this idea of invitation. Mm -hmm. It's like the Bible says you don't have because you don't ask. Don't ask. There is some participation, yes, yes. some divine participation that's not happening. Mm -hmm. Because we're not expressing our dependency through a request. God's basically like, there's some stuff I'm not doing because you're not you're asking me. You're not inviting me. In That's the, the book. You're not inviting me. And then prayer is, this is it is an extension of faith. Yeah, it's not 100%. only expression, it's an extension of faith. It's saying, God, I know you can do it, and I'm inviting you in. And then we say, amen, yes. it is already done. Can, can, can I tell you something about Hannah? What I love about Hannah, we know Hannah, she was buried. She mm -hmm. could not have a child. Yeah. And it says that when she went, she encountered Eli, she prayed. He mm -hmm. said, let your request be known. It said that before she prayed, she couldn't eat. She couldn't mm -hmm. be comforted. Mm -hmm. She couldn't be consoled. But guess what? It said after she prayed, her condition didn't change, but she did. <laughs> if prayer doesn't change it, prayer will change, change you. you. And she got up like it was already Let's done. prophesy in the chat. But things are getting ready to change. Come on. Things are getting ready to change. Get ready to change. Things right. are getting ready to change. Oh, yeah. Things are getting ready to change. So what we want to do before we get into our time of teaching, we want to we want to make sure that we're just doing more than proclaiming principles, but we're extending invitations for God's That's participation good. and visitation in your situation. Come on. And I want you to know no matter what you're facing, what you're carrying, the fact that God... Huh? ordered your steps proverbially to this thrive experience tonight yeah. is an indication that he wants to reconstruct some faith yeah. come on he wants to reconstruct some faith because he wants to do something significant in your life we get prayer requests all the time and for mm -hmm. those of you who want to send prayer requests and have us pray over them i want you to go to dariusdaniels.com connect 
They're going to put that in the chat now. DarisDaniels.com slash connect. There's a space for prayer requests there. We're going to pray over these requests. We believe the effectual fervent yes. prayers of the righteous accomplish and availeth much. much. Yeah. And I want to begin this time with prayer mm -hmm. because I know the devil uses dilemmas as distractions. Come on. So good. Right? So <laughs> you good. You know, what you, you want to receive the word. Yeah. You want to be tapped in. But he uses our dilemmas as distractions yeah. to keep us from receiving what God wants to release in our life through his word. Mm -hmm. And so we want to pray over some of these yeah. requests. Yeah. And we want to arrest Hallelujah. Come on. We want to arrest Thank you, God. some of these distractions Thank you, God. that the enemy wants to send to keep you from receiving this word that we're about to receive. So just a few names that we're going to be lifting up today. Bernice Resto, we're going to be praying for her today. We're going to be believing for physical healing. Yeah. Pastor, who else do you have? I, I got um, Sandra Johnson. We're believing God for a successful brain surgery that you already Jesus. healed, that you already hold in Jesus' name. Yeah, Jacqueline Davis, we're praying over you for guidance and protection. God is a God who orders your steps. He will not leave you orphan. He will not leave you as an orphan. He will order your steps. Who you got, Pastor? I got Karen Jeffrey, uh, overcoming mm -hmm. fear. God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of love, peace, and a sound mind. And whatever area you experience in fear, we send the peace of God yeah. right now. And I've got... I've got Rebecca Pleasant, ability to conceive a child. Hallelujah. And just like God did it for the Rebecca in the Bible, <laughs> I'm believing God's going to do it Hallelujah. for you. If you agree with that, just put, I agree. Come on. I agree. I put, agree. I agree I in agree. the chat. I, I agree. agree. Come on, Pastor. Let's pray. Father, I thank Hallelujah. you right now in thank Jesus' you, name that your word is true. Yes, Lord. <laughs> you are God that you yes. cannot lie. And you told us, you said, call up on me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that we know not yes, of. So we call on you now Hallelujah. and we do it in Jesus it name now, Jesus. and we lift up to you every Hallelujah. request that is being represented even right now in the Hallelujah. chat. As your people make their requests known yes, unto you, I call on the peace of God yes, that passes all understanding to rule their hearts yes, and mind. God. I pray Hallelujah. right now, God, for healing in every Hallelujah, broken God. place. Yes, your word says you're the Lord God Hallelujah. who heals us yeah. of all our diseases. Yes, Lord. Wherever there is a dis-ease, you can heal it. You can heal it in the body. Yes, you can God. heal it in the mind. Yes, you can heal it in relationships. Yes, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you heal every dis-ease. Yes. I pray where there is lack and people are stressed Thank you, God. and struggling. Thank you, you are God. the God Hallelujah. who supplies all of our need. You are Jaira. You provide. Hallelujah. You can't help but to provide. Yeah, so we pray for miraculous Hallelujah. provision. Send water from a rock. Yes, Send God. help from unexpected mm. places. We will look to the hills from whence it's comes our help. Here. Knowing our help comes from you. You're the maker Hallelujah. of heaven and you're the maker of earth. And I pray for people who are stuck, yes. who are struggling, yes. who are in destructive patterns, mm -hmm. people who are looking themselves in the mirror, Hallelujah. tired of making and breaking promises to themselves. Yes. You're the Lord God who sanctifies mm -hmm. us. You deliver. Mm -hmm. You set us free from habits and disorders. Yes, God. And I thank you today thank you. that you're breaking <laughs> cycles yeah. and you're breaking struggles. Yes, we just God. declare over your people, it ends now. Yes, Lord. It ends now. It ends now. It ends now in the name of Jesus. And I pray for every person who's dealing with some dilemma mm -hmm. that would distract them from receiving Do it now, God. what you want to release into their Hallelujah. life. Great God that you are. Yeah. Would you please, sir, yeah. look on them and in the language of antiquity, have mercy. Yeah. I lift them to you. Every broken heart, mm. every broken spirit, yes, Lord. every confused mind, mm. every heart that is consumed with fear. Mm. We bind that which is not ordained yes, of you. Lord. And we loose mm. your joy, your blessing, mm. your peace. Mm over the life of your people. We receive this. Hey. We say, let it be so. Yes, Lord. We say, amen. We say, amen. Let, it be so. let it be so. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. amen. If you receive that, come on, drop Hallelujah. some fire in the it. chat. Drop some it. fire come in on. the chat. My it just God. feels different, doesn't it? It feels feel different. My God. 
This feels and different. Receive it. Yeah, I'm it's excited about done. it. Already done. Receive that. Receive that. Well, listen, man, I'm excited, Pastor, about this series we're starting today. Uh, we typically do what we call expositional mm -hmm. teaching, yeah. expository. Yeah. So we take a book of the Bible and we simply just pull lessons out of that particular book. And we're going back to that in January. Mm -hmm. But I, I felt like we needed to finish this year addressing this subject of spiritual gifts. And I got confirmation on this really a few weeks ago when my son randomly texted me. He's like, hey, what do you think my spiritual gifts are? Mm. I was like, I don't know. Have you taken the <laughs> assessment? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, 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 I think he's heard me talk about it a little bit because here's what I believe. If you are not uh, aware of this subject mm -hmm. and aware of what it means for you, then you are operating beneath your God-given oh, potential. That's so good and you will not be able to fulfill your purpose. Mm. You can't do God's work without okay. God's gifts. And so we wanna spend some time unpacking this because I don't know about you, mm -hmm. I, I grew up in church and I really didn't understand the subject of spiritual gifts. Uh, you know, we grew up in, they didn't mention spiritual gifts, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, was a, it wasn't until we got into college, yeah. we started exploring and discovering and develop those spiritual gifts. But I think this is a, a area of lack in the church. Yeah, right? yeah. So we're gonna lean into it. So over the course of the next few weeks, we're gonna be looking at 1 Corinthians 12. Mm -hmm. Then next week we'll be, first part of 1 Corinthians 12, next week we'll look at the latter part of 2 Corinthians 12. We're gonna look at 1 uh, Corinthians 12, and then the latter part of 1 Corinthians 12. Then we're gonna look at some other scriptures, 1 Corinthians 13. Yep. We're gonna look at something in 1 Corinthians 14. Yes, sir. Then we're gonna be doing some studying in Romans 12. So we're still gonna be in the Bible, still gonna yeah. be expositional in a sense, expository, yeah. but we're just gonna be honing in on what the Bible, Bible actually has to say yeah. about this subject of spiritual gifts. So um, I wanna kinda lean into this with given this subject. This is what we're gonna talk about tonight. Use what, what you've you got. Think. Use what you've yeah. got. And so I want to read a scripture in 1 Corinthians 12 here. Verse 1, Paul says this, Now concerning spiritual gifts, I do not want you to be uninformed. Mm -hmm. We're going to come back to that in a second. He says, you, I don't want you ignorant in, oh, right. in this area. He says, you know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols. However, you were led. How, therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the spirit of God ever says Jesus is a curse. No one can say Jesus is Lord except the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. Mm -hmm. Not some people, not a lot of people, but in everyone. So when we say use what you got, we want to talk about, we're talking about it in the context of these spiritual gifts. So pastor, here it is. We all have been blessed with three types of okay. abilities. Right. You got natural right. ability. Mm -hmm. That's your talent. Mm -hmm. You got acquired skills. Yep. Those are your competencies, mm -hmm. things you've learned. And then you've got spiritual gifts. And I'm going to say something bold here, pastor. And I want to know what your thoughts are on it. In my experience, the average person is operating only off of two thirds yeah. of their potential. Right. They're going through life using their natural talent mm -hmm. and their acquired skill and not their spiritual gifts. Yeah. Did you hear yeah. what I just said? Yeah. That's scary. God, that's scary. That's scary. That's scary. And, and you said it right. And it's, it's like we are unaware of how deficient our life is because we haven't tapped in <laughs> to a hidden potential yes, sir. power source that God has given us. Yes, sir. Not only to function, but to accomplish our purpose. Yes. And I think that's where a lot of our frustration comes from. Yes. Like, like when you discover your gift, it may help you discover your purpose. Not may. It will. <laughs> not may. It will. Not maybe. It will. Not possibly. It will. It will. Yeah. Because here's the truth, Pastor. Here's the truth. Mm -hmm. We all have natural ability. That's mm -hmm. talent. Right. We all have skills we've had to learn. Yep. Right. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Right. So somebody may have a, a, a talent like in the area of like they got creative eye. Mm -hmm. They just got an eye for things. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that's talent. Mm -hmm. Then somebody developed a skill on how to work a camera. Mm. So you got to have an eye. Just because you can work the camera don't mean you got the eye. eye. Correct. That's, right? That's good. That's good. See the difference? I, I love so it. the talent is the eye. Mm -hmm. The skill is that competency you learn to work the machine. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. 
So many people are simply living their life using talent and skill, but you can do a whole lot with an eye. <laughs> you don't have to just use a camera with an eye. You uh -huh. can do a whole lot. You can, you can have an eye and be a stylist. Uh -huh. You can be a, have an eye and be an interior decorator. That's true. Come on, you can, be a, you can have an eye and put on events. You can do so much with an eye. Mm -hmm. So there, there, are, there, there are ways that we can use our talent that have nothing to do with our purpose. No, that's there cool. are ways we can use skills that have nothing to do with our purpose, right? But your spiritual gifts yeah. are given to you specifically for the purpose of accomplishing your purpose. And, and Pastor, I'm going to be honest. I think this is going to be a powerful lesson because people are killing it in their skills. They are achieving Come in on. their talents. Come on. But they are frustrated and they feel unfulfilled yeah. because you're operating on two-thirds. You're missing, <laughs> you're missing this element. You, 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 this, this is the missing link to your fulfillment yes. and to your, 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 I think, satisfaction. A hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and let, let's speak this over your life. Don't miss this now. We're going to speak this over your life. <laughs> if you got to where you are right now, uh -huh. off two thirds of your potential, Come on. No. where are you getting ready to go? Where are you getting ready to go? When you tap into this <laughs> other one third, <laughs> what God get ready to do with you and through you and for you is what your eyes hadn't seen mm -hmm. and what your ears hadn't heard. And if I wasn't scared, I was going to fall off this stage. Come I would shake, rattle and roll <laughs> or something right now. But they got me so close to this edge. I, I'm trying to hold my peace. Hold, hey, listen, <laughs> but somebody need to put in the chat section. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to tap in. I'm getting ready to tap, tap in. in. I'm getting ready to tap in. I will not go another day without me tapping in. Come on. Into what God has placed and what God has really given me. 100%. 100%. Do we, come on, we refuse to live our life attempting to do spiritual work without the spirit. Come on. Many people are operating without the assistance of their most important asset, and that's spiritual gifts. So when we say spiritual gifts, what do we mean? Love what do I mean? So here's the working definition we're going to be using for spiritual gifts throughout the context of this series. They are special abilities mm -hmm. distributed to believers. believers. Come on here. Mm -hmm. Come on here. Believers now. To believers by the Holy Spirit in certain seasons to accomplish specific purposes. Man. Come on now. Yeah. They are special abilities. Special abilities. Distributed to believers who have spiritual gifts. Believers yeah. who have spiritual gifts. People that have been born again. Uh -huh. Why? Because they are, they are charis, grace, uh -huh. mata, uh -huh. gifts. Grace, they grace. are, come on, charis, mata, charismatic. Charis mm -hmm. is the Greek transliteration for grace, right? Mm -hmm. So they are gifts. Mm. That the Holy Spirit gives as an act of grace. You don't earn it. You don't deserve it. You don't pick it. That why, that's why you shouldn't be arrogant about it. Because why would you be arrogant about having something you couldn't earn? You couldn't earn. Man. You know, I'm thinking about Jesus when Jesus was giving his uh, benedictory address in John. I think when he said, it is good that I go away, mm -hmm. that I'm going to send you the comforter, yes. the paraclete, the helper. Yes, sir. You know, I'm sending yes, you some help. Jesus yes, said, I'm going away yes, that sir. I may send you some help. And what these spiritual gifts are, yeah. they come to give us help and to <laughs> assist us in accomplishing what God want us to do. I and feel I like just Country need, Wayne. Come on. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. I, help I is on the way. <laughs> Pastor, I just need somebody to put in the comment section. Jesus is popping too. Go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I need some help. I don't know about you. I need some help. I need some help. I need some help. Anybody else need some help? I need some help. Special abilities. Yeah. These gifts distributed by the Holy Spirit. Come on. To believers. Mm. Watch this. In certain seasons. We're going to talk about I love, this. I love that, man. We're going to talk about man, this. Man, I love it. Yep, because the gifts you have may not be all the gifts you will have. And let me tell you something. Come on here. Man, listen. <laughs> that freed me. Yes. In a sense, because I thought, because I thought once you get a gift, you stuck with it. Yes. Yes. But yes, God yes. gives us different gifts according to the season and the assignment. All right. Let's, I want to talk about this because, um, and we're going to get into it. We're going to talk about all of this in this series. I'm, I'm going to take them to the Bible. I'm going to show them where they're, they're that I'm going to show the, the spiritual gifts come from the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit uses different methods mm -hmm. to distribute. 
those spiritual gifts. It. And one it. method is a method called impartation. Yep. And I'm going to show them later where Paul says, stir up the gift of God to Timothy, right? Mm -hmm. That was given to you how? With the By the laying on the hands of the presbytery. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you what he told believers in Rome. I long to see you mm -hmm. that I might what? Impart to you mm -hmm. some spiritual gift. Right. And I remember we were at a, um, this was back in, uh, now you were at this service. Now, yeah. I know. You I know, the trigger me. <laughs> It's a trigger, but go ahead. This is a trigger. For those of y'all that know, <laughs> for those of y'all that don't know what the inside joke is here, in a lesson earlier, um, a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. I, we were telling a story about some services we were going to in college. We went to college together, and he reminded me he wasn't at a lot of those services. No, but you were, you were at I this you at this service. I think you were. You might not have no, been. No, I was there. I know okay. what you finished it. Oh, it's on it's on Interstate fifty five. Yep. In Jackson, in one of those hotels, it might have been the Clarion Hotel. Dorinda Clark Cole. Okay, yeah. she Dorinda Clark Cole was there preaching. Mm -hmm. And so after she gets through preaching, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm telling y'all, <laughs> she starts laying hands on people. Now I didn't fake fall out this time. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <Y'all> <laughs> I didn't fake fall out this time. So she's laying hands on people, and I, I, because I wasn't taught any of this, so I, I didn't know anything about it. She's laying hands on people, and she gets to me. She lays hands on me. And she says this. She says prophecy. Yep. Yep. Prophecy. She came to you. She came, to you. came to me and said prophecy. Yeah. At that moment, now this is weird because uh -huh. I'm going to talk about this because people, people, some people think gifts are offices uh -huh. and they're not. I love it. I love, I love the distinction. They are not. Uh -huh. Gifts are not offices. <laughs> right? So a person can have prophetic gifting mm -hmm. and you can use that prophetic gifting as a financial analyst. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jo jo Joseph had to have prophetic gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. He was able to foresee, come on, mm -hmm. a trend mm -hmm. yep. that was about to happen, yep. a famine. Mm -hmm. Seven years of plenty, seven mm -hmm. years of lack. Mm -hmm. And he used that spiritual gifting in the context of the marketplace, actually. Yep. Right? That's so, so good. But he wasn't a prophet. That's Daniel good. was a prophet. Yep. Joseph had prophetic gifting. Two Love different it. things. Love it. Love it. So she said that. And I remember then. I never have been walking around a thus said the Lord kind of guy because I'm not a prophet. Mm -hmm. But I remember after that moment being able to know things intuitively Came to you. in certain moments about people Came. that there's no way I would know if it hadn't been put unless God imparted. Listen, bro. Man, that's, that's not talent. That's a trigger, man. So now, you, why are you triggered? I'm triggered, man. I, I was happy. What? I'm happy now. Why are you triggered? <laughs> but, man, she laid hands on You know when you get laid hands on Are you triggered on. because she didn't lay hands on you? Yeah, because <laughs> when she laid hands on you, I was in the back like this. And I'm like, I know she coming to me next. I opened my eyes. <laughs> like, I know she. So I went home mad <laughs> that the woman of God didn't lay hands on me. I'm glad you got it. But I, I, had, man, I was kind of mad. Hey. It's it funny sometimes though. Sometimes you want people to come lay hands on you, <laughs> but then there are other. There was other, right, did, let me tell this, <laughs> tell this story. Tell this story. Okay. So we were in choir rehearsal. We we were both in this choir. Hey, we need to put. We're gonna put the um. We'll put the album cover okay. up right okay. now yeah. so that y'all can see it. Yeah. We want y'all to look at this album cover. We were on the album now. Yeah. We were the, I, in college. We recorded an album. Yep. This choir we were part of. I led a song. You did. You didn't lead a song. I wrote two songs, though. Ask Out being my songwriter. Just because you wrote a sentence or two in a song doesn't mean hey, you wrote listen. the song. I made a significant contribution <laughs> to the songs. I wrote two songs. <laughs> give her credit. Okay. Now, Usher now, in the spirit. Her, Usher in the spirit. <laughs> okay. And I uh, uh, I'm just it all joy. I know. I, I remember. I <laughs> mean, listen. I'm All not. I remember is when you had that tablet right near Usher in the Spirit, and I walked in. The only thing I saw was Usher in the Spirit. That was at that time. That's the only song. You didn't wait on the Lord to move. <laughs> he didn't wait on the Lord to move. Anyway, let me tell this story. I got to make sure the lesson. <laughs> we were in choir rehearsal one time, and the guy that kind of put the choir together, he was prophetic. Mm -hmm. He was a prophet. Oh, so he, was, he had prophetic <laughs> gifting, big time. And so he starts. In the middle of choir rehearsal, like speaking into people, but he was like bringing correction. So it was like he had hit a couple of people and he was just like speaking into some private areas of their life, uh -huh. bringing some correction. So Pastor Marcus is standing by me 
at that time in rehearsal. So I'm looking, I'm paying attention. I look to my right, he's gone. He's not even in rehearsal. No so rehearsal's over. We walk outside, he stepped outside. I said, what happened, where'd you go? He said, man. Hey. He said he got to call his stuff out. I couldn't let him get to me. Hey. I was guilty of trying to do what the spirit do without the spirit. <laughs> hey, I had some stuff on me, man. I, got it I said, nah, I don't want this to. I went outside to repent. You were, I'm talking about repent, Lord. Listen, I'm sorry. You know, I, I, I ain't, you know, Lord, just, just forgive me. Don't show him nothing. I'm finna go back in there. I just need this to be man clean. Stepped. I'm clean, though. He said, I didn't, I didn't want him to get to me. Nah, nah. He messed up. It was two people in front of him. <laughs> you said, I see where this going. I see where this going. I see where this is going. <laughs> Up go. <laughs> anyway, anyway, when she laid hands on, Dorinda Clark laid hands yeah, on me yeah. that night. Yeah. And so that, what, what we're trying to, the point we're trying to make is we're trying to get you to see the difference between what you people would call a talent and people would call a skill yeah. and a spiritual gift. gift. Yeah. So like the ability to, to, to know things that you can't just read based off of somebody's body language or mm -hmm. cues, mm -hmm. like that knower, that only comes from the Holy Spirit. So these gifts aren't talent, they're not acquired skill, but they're spiritual abilities that enable and empower you and I to do what can't be done God. with natural talent or acquired skill. God can use talent, mm -hmm. he can use mm -hmm. skill, but they shouldn't be confused with spiritual gifts and they don't replace the necessity of these spiritual gifts. Yeah. And I, you know, and I just, you know, jot this down, how kind of spiritual gifts, they are promptings and unctions and empowerments to function in That's a spiritual good. capacity. That's good. You know, when we get these promptings and these unctions and it's that empowerment to function. Yes. Like you can't function. Right. You know, these promptings to kind of push you into an area. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll talk about that later about discovering uh, developing and deploying, but sometimes this Holy Spirit will maybe give you an unction and you're like, why do I feel this unction? Right. Why am I prompted? That's right. You know, like in the supermarket, like mm -hmm. God will prompt you so good. to go and pray for somebody and go and lay hands on somebody. And you're like, man, God, what? why am I prompted to do this? Or when you see certain people... Now don't do that unless God tells you. Now, please go ahead. Please don't. Go ahead. Please don't. It's just like how when you see people that, you know, that, that, that compassion immediately comes on you, those, those are promptings and umptings, That's right. you know, from the Holy Spirit to get you, to maybe get you to operate in yep. the spiritual. So someone who may have like a mercy gift. A mercy gift, yeah. And that, that means that you got this like, Mother Teresa had to have a mercy gift. Mm -hmm. This ability to uniquely empathize with people, mm -hmm. um, to enter into their pain and to respond accordingly. Like that story I told about Pastor Shamika on uh -huh. the, on the uh -huh. airplane. Mm -hmm. And um, how she had, like, you, that was brilliant. How she had a prompting. Yeah. This sensing mm -hmm. that something's off with the young lady, right? And that, that, that intuition to ask the question. Uh -huh. But then the spiritual gift gives her spiritual genius. Yeah. So come on, your spirit, you got uncommon IQ in the area mm -hmm. where you're gifted. She knew how to respond instinctively That's in a good. moment That's like good. that. That's good. Where man. I would only know how to respond with instruction. Mm -hmm. You would have to teach me how to respond. Yes, good. But, and that's what the scripture means that's when good. it says, the anointing that's in you, have no need for anybody to teach you, the anointing that's in you mm -hmm. will teach you all things. The Bible's not contradicting itself. Mm -hmm. It's not saying in Ephesians 4, you need teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. And then saying in John, you don't need teachers right. because you have the anointing. It's saying that there are certain things that can't be taught. Come on. That, that what, how Pastor Shemika responded mm -hmm. in that moment. Couldn't be taught. It couldn't be taught. Couldn't be taught. Had to be spirit-led. Had to yeah. be spirit-led. And I know we probably talk about this in the context, but you said something. We got so much experience, and you said something that almost triggered me again. Like, don't go touching and laying hands on everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I've been on, a, been, on, <laughs> been, on, <laughs> been on the other side of people probably laying hands on me that shouldn't. Yeah. And so... I think that's, it, it may be comical, but I think, you know, you got to be careful who you lay hands on. Lay hands suddenly on, on no one, man. on no one, on right. no one. Right. Guys, these gifts are so important. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul is writing to new believers in Corinth. Right. And out of all the stuff he could have talked to them about, 
in chapter 12, he says, one translation says this. He says, I don't want you to be ignorant. Mm -hmm. NIB says, uninformed, King James, New King James says, I wouldn't ha not have you ignorant concerning spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. This is so important. And listen, these people in Corinth were baby believers. Baby believers, right. Yeah. Yeah. Recently received the gospel. They're in a pagan culture, a polytheistic culture. All sorts of stuff was going on. And if you know anything historically about Corinth, mm -hmm. Corinth was literally positioned geographically like Miami. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was as diverse and dense as New York, uh -huh. but had the ethics of Vegas. Lord Jesus. That's Corinth. Yes, that's man. <laughs> right? It was a whole situation. situation. Position like Miami. Yep. <laughs> dense and diverse like New York. But then the ethics and the, 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 the looseness of like a Vegas. I, I love that description. <laughs> Wait a minute. You got, no, you no, got me a little scared. No, I said, no. That's said, a, I that's love a, that. No, that's an accurate description. Like that, right. Let me, let me. <laughs> <laughs> I get a picture in my mind, you know what I'm saying? So I, that's, yeah. a, that's a very appropriate description. So he's writing to people there mm -hmm. and saying, listen, out of all the stuff he could teach, mm -hmm. he's like, I can't have you ignorant on this. Spiritually, yeah. This is an area I can't have you ignorant. Because ignorance is not just the absence of information. It's the absence of right the absence. information. I love it. And so he says, I got to make sure you have the right information regarding spiritual gifts. Why? Because ignorance is expensive. Mm -hmm. It costs us to be uninformed or misinformed. And Paul knows in the area of spiritual gifts, ignorance is going to cost us in three areas. First area is going to cost us is in the area of our potential. Because mm -hmm. we mentioned earlier, without being aware of and knowing how to leverage mm -hmm. my spiritual gifts, I am living life on only two thirds of my potential. And that is a life lesser and lower than God intends. A hundred percent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. So it's going to cost me my potential. I can't actualize my potential. Or I can't actualize potential mm -hmm. I'm not aware of. Right. That's good. That's good. Come on. All That's right. So good. The second thing is going to cost me is my purpose. Because if we mentioned earlier that spiritual gifts are necessary for the accomplishing of our purpose. Right. If I'm not aware of and leveraging my spiritual gifts, I'm trying to do the Spirit's work without the Spirit. God gave me spiritual gifts not because they are an accessory. Mm -hmm. They are a necessity in order to carry out my purpose. So if I'm not using them, I'm not walking in the fullness of my, of my purpose. Because potential is needed for purpose. Man, that's good. That's good. And then the third thing is going to cost us, Pastor, is peace. You don't find total peace without walking in the totality of your purpose. I want you to see the sequential yeah, nature of this, yeah, right? I get it. You got potential, but you need potential to accomplish your purpose. purpose. So you can't, have, you can't reach your potential without spiritual gifts because you're only living off natural ability and acquired skills. Okay? But you can't carry out your purpose without your potential because God gives you potential for your purpose. Got me? Okay. But if you're not walking in purpose, you won't have peace. You will not have peace. So Paul knows how important this is, that being aware of this isn't just about doing stuff. Mm -hmm. It's about becoming someone Something. that I cannot become without an awareness of these gifts. I'm going to pay the price in my potential, my purpose, or my peace. And I love it, man. You, you said something that how spiritual gifts are not just designed to make us do but they are designed to make us be. That's right. You know, not only do they come to uh, uh, allow us to accomplish or do some things, but it calls us to be some people. That's right. You know. That's right. So we're not just human. Be, uh, uh, you know, we just don't do. But the but we are described as human beings. Not human doings. Not human doings. We are human beings, and this gifts calls. I mean, the spiritual gift calls us to be. Yeah. What God has called us to be. Yeah. Strong. Yeah. Strong. Strong. Yeah. And this something that Paul says in the text, man, is so powerful. He says this. He's a, he offers some important insight about the gifts. He says there are a variety of gifts, mm -hmm. but the same spirit. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. distributes different gifts, yep. varieties of gifts, right. different gifts to different people, but it's mm -hmm. the same spirit. Yeah. So he distributes different gifts to different people because our purpose or our functions, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that next week, uh -huh. they differ. They so I don't need the gifts you have. Right. You don't need the gifts I have mm -hmm. because I don't have the assignment you have. 
and you don't have the assignment or the function that I have. Now, so do you see, we're going to deal with this next week. Do you see why Paul is telling people in the latter part of 1 Corinthians 12 how silly mm -hmm. it is to compare gifts? Yeah. And, and you said something, too. And we talked about how comparison is a joy. I mean, it's like a joy and peace robber. That's it right. It robs us of our joy and our peace mm -hmm. when we try to compare assignments and yeah. functions. Yeah. Yeah. And I think some of us, we get guilty of, like, in that moment where I was kind of, you know, in my feelings, when you got your hand <laughs> laid on you, it was just like comparing. Like, and sometimes when you compare yourself to others, you don't leave yourself room for God to do what he want to do in you. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And so, uh, you, know, it, you know, not being ignorant is like, hey, my function and my assignment is not your function and assignment, but that's okay. That's right. Because God can equally use me. That's right. In my in my lane. In my lane. In my side. Just like he's using you in your lane. Yeah. Yeah, but Paul literally has to spend a whole section of his letter mm -hmm. dealing with classism yep. with the gifts, yep. helping people see, yo, yep. the gifts that are more visible aren't necessarily more important. <laughs> yeah. Because yep. people people felt yep. that yep. way, right? Yep. yep. And and comparison mm -hmm. of gifts. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna get into that. We're gonna rest that on <laughs> next week. Yeah. I'm telling you, we're gonna wield the weapon of God's word. And we're gonna rest that next week because there are people who were feeling small yeah. because they felt like if their gift wasn't visible, it yeah. wasn't big. It wasn't big. Yep. That's right. Yeah, people was like, um, well, I'm just the eye, or I'm just the ear, or I'm just the mm -hmm. and Paul's like. If everybody is an eye in the body, where's the hearing? If everybody's an ear, where's the seeing? Mm -hmm. And so the same spirit yep. gives different gifts yep. to different the people because our assignment yes. or our function is different. So it is illogical. It is unbiblical. It is unwise for me to feel less than or for me to compare my spiritual gifts to yours because I need my gifts for my assignment and you need your gifts for yours. And this, and this is why this lesson is so powerful because not only did the enemy use it back in the days of Corinth, mm -hmm. but he's using it now. Yeah. He's using it now yeah. to have people to operate in a level of offense, Ooh. right? Mm. Because we're a gift compare, mm -hmm. right? And then, mm -hmm. and then I think sometimes when it comes to these spiritual gifts, and I think that uh, spirit, spiritual gifts come with maturity, Right. Because sometimes what what if we're not careful, we will allow spiritual gifts to make us want to create. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And so what happens when you're operating in your spiritual gift, but you not but you don't get to create mm -hmm. or you don't get to, quote unquote, attention. You think your gift. See, we all in the next week's lesson. Okay, I'm sorry. But no, but that's the thing. That's the thing. And we need to ride this river because. There are certain gifts in culture Most that are more celebrated by people than exactly. others. Most definitely. But it doesn't mean those gifts are more important to God than others. I love it. I love so it. if somebody's got a mercy gift, mm -hmm. right, where you can just empathize with people, much of your work is not going to be seen. It's not going to be seen. Mother Teresa's work, it, a lot of it wasn't. See, it wasn't on a stage. Mm -hmm. It wasn't on a platform. That's good, it was behind the scenes. That's good. And someone who might have a teaching gift, mm -hmm. well, that gift's going to be more visible because it's going to be on the platform. But it, that doesn't mean God sees that gift as more important than the mercy gift. And it takes a really spiritually mature and emotionally healthy person mm. to walk in that John the Baptist anointing. Mm. That says my, that, watch this, that says my gift calls for me to decrease. Y'all not ready? Yeah, that's what it did. Y'all not ready? That's what it did. That's what so it did. that he can increase. Watch Hallelujah. this. So it means he became less that's popular with people, to get but more popular with God. Because Jesus said, among women, uh -huh. there is born no one greater, greater. come on, than John the Baptist. Come on. So, so he, he, he lost some applause of men, but he gained the applause of heaven. Lord have mercy. Because he was willing to walk in his gift. Oh, and I don't know who this is for, but maybe we ought to pray, it, pray for this at the end. We're just praying that God breaks that gift comparison mm -hmm. off 
and that God breaks the spirit of or an attitude. When I say spirit, I mean attitude of insecurity and imposter syndrome mm -hmm. that's making some people feel like because my gift is not as visible, my gift is not as powerful. Man, and, and, and man, and I'm just, and one of the things I heard was like, you know, do you want a platform or a stage more than you want to operate in your gift? Mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, is your desire to be on stage making your gift less effective? Mm. And I think hopefully we, we talk about this is like, I love that, you know, where we uh, exercise our gift. Mm -hmm. Because just like you said, John the Baptist mm -hmm. was what? In the wilderness, literally mm -hmm. in the wilderness. And what he thought he was in a <laughs> They missed it, Doc. They missed it. He was That's in the, strong. Yeah. He was in the wilderness. Yes. Yeah. That's where he was exercising his gift. In the wilderness. In the woods. Not in the synagogue. I'm not going to bother that. He wasn't in the synagogue. He, in, he was in the wilderness eating wild honey and locusts. Listen, and, and what he wasn't wearing all the religious garb and garments that the other religious leaders were wearing. Well, what did Jesus say? And I think, man, listen. <laughs> that, that's strong. See, I don't know who this, but we need to pause right here. And somebody put this in the chat. One, I want to make sure y'all pressing that like button because <laughs> no, I'm serious because, because a word like this needs to get to as many people as possible. Yes. Yeah. We're not saying press the like button to say you like us, mm -hmm. but we need to go crazy on these likes because this, somebody needs to just randomly open up YouTube and this just needs to show up in their feed because they need this because some people are being arrested by insecurity because God's calling for them to work their gift in the wilderness. It's it. not as visible, it's not as seen, it's not as popular, it's not as pretty, it's not as alluring, it's not as, attra as attractive, but it's great. It's great. Jesus said, among men, there is born nobody greater than John the Baptist. Jesus is like, he in the wilderness, but he's great. He's great. He's great. And the enemy wants you to divorce your greatness for knownness. Y'all missed it. Somebody put fire in yeah. the chat. He wants Say you to that again, yeah. Pastor. Work. I want somebody put in the chat, use what you got. Come on, use what you got. Use what you got. Love the calling you have, not the one you wish you had. <laughs> yes. Did y'all hear what, what I just it? said? Love, Love the one you have, yeah. not the one you, you wish you had. had. Because when you, no stage, no platform, no popularity will give you the internal spiritual satisfaction that you get when you walk in your lane. I'm just telling you, a stage won't do it. Mm -hmm. An Instagram following won't do it. Money won't do it. There's a, satis a degree of satisfaction and fulfillment that you only get when you're walking in your God-given gift. And... and and some of us, you know, you know, your gift is not for you, but it will benefit you and it will, it will be a blessing for yeah. you. Because God will not let you exercise your gift. That's right. And not bless you. Come on. And you not to get the, you don't he get the benefit. He not honor that. Yeah. He honor that. Man, this is wrong. Yes. Yeah. This is, this is. So Paul says, listen, God, it's the same spirit. It's the same spirit. He just give different gifts <laughs> according to our function. Now, Paul also says this. He says there are different gifts. Uh -huh. he, he says, excuse me. So same, different gifts, same spirit. Then he says there are a variety of service mm. and activities, but the same Lord who empowers all. So there are different gifts. Mm -hmm. Then there are times where we got the same gift, but different services. Different. Uh, one translation says administrations. So me and you both can have a teaching gift. Right. But the way I'm the way my function, my calling to administer that gift may be on a public platform. Every yeah, week. Yeah. Somebody else calling may be in a private platform. Mm -hmm. So same gift. Mm -hmm. Some people are great with small groups. Right. Some people are better with large right. groups. Right. Some people are great on radio. Mm -hmm. Some people are better on television. Mm -hmm. Some people are great. So everybody can have a teaching gift. Some some people's teaching gift is administered through book writing. Yeah. Now watch this. Come on, I don't know if y'all ready for this, but some historians suggest Paul was better in writing than he was in person. That's what they, yep. Yep. He they said, say, he, he said, 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 he
He did say that. He, My speech was not, not ex, yeah, with, with enticing words, with that of a man's wisdom, uh -huh. but in demonstration of spirit and power, power so that your faith would stand not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Right. Paul himself said, yeah, I'm not the most eloquent. Uh -huh. I, I don't have elocution and articulation. I'm not verbose. Mm -hmm. he, he said uh, he was stronger in his letters. God used his writings Come on. way more than his yeah. words. Come on. But he taught through a pen. I don't know who, mm -hmm. who this is for. I don't know who this is for, yes, but he taught through a pen. And sometimes people get caught up in comparison with that too. Yep. They feel like if they got the same gift, they're supposed to be working the gift the same, same way, way somebody else does. The same way. You can be a teacher and doing what I'm doing right now. And you can be a teacher and be a podcaster. You can be a teacher and be a book writer. You can be a teacher and be a mentor. That teaching gift can administer itself in a number of different ways. Man, listen, you, you, you this is this is you say it all the time. This your, your anointing has an audience. Yes. And and so your your charisma has a crowd. <laughs> I like that. Your gift, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your, your charisma your, has a crowd. crowd. I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So whoever, you know, God has assigned some people to your gift. And I think sometimes we we get caught up in crowd comparison. <sighs> say that again. Yeah, I think sometimes the devil uh uses us by uh, getting us caught up in crowd comparison. Mm. I'm peeping at your crowd. And mm. see, and see, if if I get caught up peeping at your crowd, mm. you know, I will mismanage mine. Come on. You know, Come right? On. Like, like I won't be the best and I won't get be able to give my crowd what they deserve. Yeah. Because I'm peeping in, in, in at yours. Oh my goodness. So me peeping at your crowd is taking attention from mine. 100 percent Yeah. 100 percent 100%. This, this is important because Paul is communicating like, hey, these gifts, they come from God. However, I think we need to ask a question before we wrap up. Mm -hmm. and, and that's this. Okay. If God is responsible for giving the gifts, mm -hmm. he picks the gifts mm -hmm. that he picks. We're going to have to deal with this later. He picks the gifts that he gives me. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Now, Paul also said, I don't want to confuse y'all, but Paul also says when it comes to, all right, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I know you. I know you. Yeah, you know where I'm going I with this, right? Going. I know where you're going. Next yeah. week, next yeah, okay. week, next week, next week, next going. week. All right. All right. So if God's responsible for giving the gifts, mm -hmm. what are we responsible for? There are three things mm -hmm. that we're responsible for. And we're going to walk you through these three things and we're going to wrap up. Here's the first one. Three areas of responsibility. Number one, I'm responsible for discovery. Yeah. Right. That's good. I need to know, I need to know what I got. I can't leverage mm -hmm. or I can't use what I don't know I have. Now, I'm not saying, here it is. There are sometimes people are operating in spiritual gifts and they don't know they're operating in spiritual right. gifts. So I'm not saying that. I'm saying you can't leverage it to its full potential and capacity if you're unaware of it, though. Like some people are doing stuff instinctively and intuitively and that's a spiritual gift at work. Mm -hmm. But if they knew, that is a spiritual gift. Mm -hmm. Then they will be less resistant, more open, and they will leverage that gift in a different kind of way when you know you got it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Makes sense. It makes yeah. so much sense. This is what Paul, Paul said in uh, 2 Timothy 1, 6. For this reason, I remind you, Timothy, to fan into flame and mm -hmm. stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Now, does that mean that gift came from Paul? No, mm -hmm. it means it came from God through the sacramental act mm -hmm. of the laying on of hands. I love it. I love it. Did you hear what I, I just said? Sacramental a act. sacrament is a means of grace. grace. <laughs> it is something that God has chosen to use to release and to transport something to someone else. So the, the source of it is God. Mm -hmm. The instrument that he uses is what we would I call a sacrament. I love it. And so the laying on of hands when it's done biblically <laughs> yep. is a sacramental act. It is something that God says, I will use that to impart a spiritual <laughs> gift. I will use that to bring healing to people. I will use that to perform exorcisms. Come mm -hmm. on. Yep. We see it all throughout scripture. Jesus engaged in this sacramental act. Mm -hmm. I'll use it to release grace on people for a function or office or set of responsibilities, they get ready to walk in. So when Paul tells Timothy, lay hands on no man suddenly, is in the context of ordaining people, right? right? Yes, yep. So, so this, 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 this is important here. 
I got a gift. And Paul's telling Timothy, hey, man, stir that, stir that thing up. Mm -hmm. So we need to, to discover. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing right now is, is we're walking you through a process on the importance of them. And then we're going to give you a discernment tool. Mm -hmm. I was going to give it to you this week. I'm not. Okay, that's good. I'm going to give it to you next week because I need to lay it some more foundation. Okay. Because if I give it to you this week, don't get impatient. I want you to trust me. <laughs> I, I need it right now. All it's going to do is confuse you if I don't lay this foundation right. that I need to give foundation, you next week. Yeah, foundation. Okay? So, but there's a discernment tool that we use to help you give language to what some of your spiritual gifts are. I love it. Because some people are surprised. They got gifts they don't think they have. Mm -hmm. And other people think they got gifts they, they don't. They don't. <laughs> I'm called to teach. No, you can't. <laughs> <Help me. laughs> no, you can't. Somebody need to tell you. <laughs> we, we talked about honest conversation <laughs> last week. We need to have an honest conversation. You like to teach. You're passionate about teaching. That doesn't mean. Now, you look you up about, about 10 people sleep. <laughs> That's What'd you say? You say, say the preacher said, y'all ain't saying nothing. And somebody yeah. said, you're not either. You're not either. <laughs> Ain't nobody said. <laughs> if you say something, we will. <laughs> but, but Pastor Man, listen, with this discovering, and I think, uh, you know, even with the second point, how environment is so important. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes God Good. places us yeah. in environments yeah. to help us discover the gift. Yeah. And sometimes these can be challenging environments. Yeah. Not to help us only discover our gifts, but to kind of help us develop those gifts. Yes. Because I'm looking at I'm looking at I'm looking at Joseph. Yeah. Yeah, that was a challenge in him. Yes. Yeah, he, he yeah. had a dream, but yeah. then God said, you discovered your gift, but now I'm going to ordain a pit. I'm, a, I'm going to ordain Potiphar's house. Prison. And a prison to, to kind of help you develop that gift. Yes. And then sometimes, listen, man, there is, whew, there is a distance between discovery and development. Yes. Is what I would call, that distance is what I would call a process. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we want to skip the process. Man, mm -hmm. Facebook has, has a meme, man, where this guy like a steps. And mm -hmm. this guy like on the first step and then he just try to jump to the 12th step. Mm -hmm. And that's how we are in the church sometimes. Mm -hmm. And especially with our gifts, we try to skip steps. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We try to jump from step one to step 12, not knowing two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm -hmm. Helps give us what we need. It's good. Not only to reach step 12, but to stay on step yeah. 12. No, that's powerful. And, and, and I think that, man, environments matter. That's so good. And you hit, that's the second point there. Once I discover, which, which takes intentionality. Intentionality, right. right? It takes intentionality. I need, mm -hmm. to use it, I need to use this discernment tool that we're going to give you. Mm -hmm. um, and you, community is important because the church is God's affirming body yep. and confirming body. Yep. God deposits, but, the, but God's people affirm Aff and confirm. I love it. Um, so that, you know, if, if the only person to say, you have that gift as you. You might not have it. <laughs> yeah. Can, can right. we just speak to this too? <laughs> you know, we tell people like, I think we, I think we abdicate our duty to have honest conversation because sometimes we talk. You know, I, we grew up in the tradition. Mm -hmm. I ain't know what God told somebody. Yes, we do. If it's not based on scripture, if it's we not know that's on, not God. Like yeah. God called. You know, sometimes I think we we miss our opportunity to help people to lovingly shepherd people. To the right place. To the right place. hundred percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some stuff, some stuff we don't know <laughs> what God told people, right, right? Right. But we know if it blatantly violates scripture, right? We That's know good. the word of God. That's good. How do we know it? Hebrews says yeah. that the word of God is what distinguishes, sharpening it into a sword, mm -hmm. piercing even to divine uh, 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 asunder of the soul, uh, soul and spirit, just like joints and marrow, mm -hmm. like bones and marrow. So mm -hmm. just like... Like marrows intertwined in bones, mm -hmm. soul and spirit are intertwined. Yeah. So whether or not it's me or God, sometimes it takes the word of God to, to separate that. Uh -huh. Like no matter how strong you feel it, if it's not lined up with scripture, that's not God. God not God. That's not God. Ooh. I remember, I'm not going to bother this. I saw this on, uh, yes I am, but I saw this on like, uh, I saw this online. Where is this guy? He was prophesying, right? Uh -huh. And he was prophesying like two people was like supposed to be together. I saw and that one that was already married. It's <laughs> like, no, her husband right here. <laughs> so, I, I, <laughs> so what we know is right now. So I don't know. Maybe in the future, those people going to get together. Some, but right now, we can say right now, this not God. Ooh, that's not, that's God. not judging anybody. Uh -uh. Why? 
Because the person already married. Uh -huh. So it doesn't matter how strong you feel it. The Bible says it's the scriptures that, that separate the soul, what I'm feeling, and the spirit. So we got to develop. We got to develop these gifts, right? Yeah. We got to develop these gifts. And 1 Timothy 4.14 says this. Do not, do not neglect, neglect the, the gift, gift that you have, you. which was given to you by prophecy. Wait a minute. Come on. When the council of elders did what? Laid, Laid their hands on you. Then he says this. Practice these things. Immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. Where? In your gift. In your gift. Practice. Use it. Put it to work. Immerse yourself in it so that all may see your progress. All right. We're wrap, we wrapping up here. Let's let's let, let's. Let's get to this last one. You got to discover it. We're going to help you with that. Give us a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. You got to develop it. Mm -hmm. We're going to help you with that. And number three, you got to deploy it. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, this is what it says. As each has received a gift, use it. <laughs> Serve to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. One translation says the manifold grace of God. So it says, if I received a gift, I need to use that gift. And if I'm not using it to serve other people, I'm not being a good steward over it. I'm saying, God, you could have taken this preaching gift, this leadership gift, this apostolic gift, this prophetic gift, this mercy gift, this encouraging gift, this word of knowledge, this healing, whatever gift he's giving you, this leadership gift, this exhortation gift, you could have taken that and given it to somebody else because I'm not being a good steward over it if I'm not using it to serve other people. And a lot of times that serve other people part gets missed out on because the devil wants me to use my gift to serve me, to serve my ego. Serve my pride. To serve my pride, to serve my insecurities. But the text says to, serve, to use it to serve one another. And you know, Pastor, one of the things that I realize is that even when a person discovers their gifts mm -hmm. and develops their gifts, a lot of times they don't deploy their gifts, not because of what they believe about God, but because of what they believe about themselves. That sometimes they're hesitant to use them, afraid to use them, insecure to use them. And this is what I learned. And I, I want to give you all something. They're getting ready to put something in the chat for you. I feel like the Holy Spirit gave me this when we were preparing this lesson. How you feel about you is largely determined by how you talk to you. you I have never seen anybody oh, man. with a positive self-image, a biblical self-image, with negative, negative self-talk. Uh, I've never seen it. That's so powerful. Ooh. I've never seen it. You talk to you more than God does. This is why God told Joshua, don't let my word uh, or, or keep my word in your mouth day and night so that you say unto yourself what I'm saying about you. He said, meditate on it. And he says this, don't let it depart from your lips. That what you're saying needs to be what I said, because how you feel about you is largely determined by it. How you're talking to you. And many of us need to be discipled on how to talk to That's ourselves. Good. That's so good. So I wrote these affirmations. The Bible calls them confessions. Mm -hmm. Confession. Homo legos, the verb form of logos, mm -hmm. which means to word. speak, word, mm -hmm. word. Lego means to speak. So confession is this idea of saying the same thing. I am saying the same thing about me that God, God says. Same. And many people have to be trained on that. Because most people, what they talk, what they say to themselves is by default. It's not by design. Mm. It's not by design. Ooh. So I've wrote five I am equipped affirmations. Five I am equipped affirmations. They're putting in the chat a link right now where you can go and you can download these affirmations. And you need to say these to yourself. I'm going to give them to you real quick. Here's number one. I'm divinely called, lavishly gifted and fully equipped to fulfill God's purpose in my life. I'm gonna say that one again, that one hit me. 
I'm divinely called. I've been lavishly gifted. And I'm fully equipped to fulfill God's purpose in my life. You ought to say that to yourself. Here's the second one. By God's grace, I will find my purpose. With his gifts, I discover my power. With his guidance, I will fulfill his plan. You ought to say that to yourself. Number three, I boldly declare I'm chosen, I'm confident, I'm capable, and I am competent in all God sets my hands to do. Here's the fourth one. I lack nothing. God's. Y'all better receive that. I lack nothing. I receive it. God has equipped me, anointed me, and empowered me for his divine mission. I don't care if I feel overwhelmed, I lack nothing. I don't care if I make mistakes, I lack nothing. I don't care if I miss the mark, I lack nothing. I don't care if people doubt me, I lack nothing. I don't care if I doubt myself, I lack nothing. And then here's the last one, and I really want y'all to embrace this one. I reject imposter syndrome. I arrest insecurity, and I embrace all that God has called me to be and I will do all that God has called me to do. You need those affirmations. I want you to have them so that you can say them over yourself. And I want to pray right now. I just pass. I'm going to ask pastor to pray specifically over number five. That's what I feel like. The Bible says when Jesus teaches us how to pray, deliver us from evil. So there are some things we pray for and then there are things we pray against. And we want to pray against this imposter syndrome, this insecurity that people are feeling when it comes to using their gifts. We want to break that off of you supernaturally in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful and thankful. Thank you, Jesus. For the discovery on tonight that what you have exposed us to tonight is a sign and a symbol of your love. Mm. And so, God, we thank you that you are even moving right now, that you're moving in hearts, that you're moving in rooms right now, that you're moving in spaces, mm. that you're breaking off this imposter syndrome, God. Yes. And that you're reminding us even right now in this moment that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, mm. that we were no accidents, God. Yes. That we were no coincidences, God, but you made us in purpose, on purpose, and for, for purpose. And so, God, not only do we break this, this hole of this imposter syndrome, God, but we break the chains of insecurity that the devil tries to make us operate mm. in, God. We come against insecurity in every area, insecurity, spiritual insecurity, relational insecurity, financial insecurity, mental, emotional insecurity. God, we come against it right now, God, and we fully embrace God. And we ask even right now that you give us the grace, the wisdom, the power, Jesus. your divine assistance mm. to help us embrace all that you called us to be. God, we're not going to wait to the new year, God, to make Jesus. a new year's resolution, God. But the revolution starts now. Yes. We are better mm. now. We operate in the fullness of your grace now. Now. We claim that we are better now. Now. And we leave this space, God. Yes. Knowing not only that we've encountered your presence, experienced your power, but we leave this place fully knowing that we are different. And on the other side of this difference is better and greater. We claim it now in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Put fire in the chat if you receive that, man. Man, listen, yeah. God's doing something. He's getting ready to launch you into, listen to me, you, you need to receive this prophetically. I was talking to a friend of mine recently, and I was telling him, I was like, man, you're so creative, and you're so captivating that I think your congregation gets so caught up in your gift that they don't know when you shift it, and God's talking. And I was like, the reason you've been able to have such impact on my life is because even in conversation, I'm able to tell when you stopped and God started talking. So in this moment right now, I need you to receive this, that if God's about to launch you into this usage of this last one third of your potential, it's because he's getting ready to use you in ways he hadn't used you before. 
That's why he's having this conversation with you now. Before the year ends, he's having this conversation. Because as you get into 2024, what he's got for you is going to require not just natural ability, not just acquire skill. It's going to require spiritual gifts. Get ready. Your eyes hadn't seen, your ears hadn't heard what God has for you. Man, we love you. They're going to put Lord Third on the screen right now. Um, I would, if you understand the principle of sowing and reaping, there's no way I would not sow into this moment. 100%. I would be open to, there's a spiritual gift people don't like. It's the one gift people don't like to talk about. It's the gift of giving. (laughs) Paul said, just like you excel in speech, grace, and everything else, see that you excel in this grace also. It is the grace of giving, giving, a revelation of the sowing of seed mm-hmm. and offering that which I give, which is above my tithe mm-hmm. as I put seed mm-hmm. into the ground. Wow. So Lord Third's coming on the screen. Ways for you to do that right now. We love you. God bless you. you. And can't wait to see you next week as we dive deeper into this subject of spiritual gifts. Take care. Take care. Well, listen, thank you for watching Thrive. I want you to make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of our teachings. And remember, you can watch me live at Thrive every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard.